Hi guys, welcome to Chess Class with Coach Nathan. Today we'll be looking at a game of Victor Korchnoi's. This is Korchnoi. He was world champion. What years, I will look up in a second, but uh, he basically played from 1942 to 1983. Um, very strong player. He's Armenian. He's from the country of Armenia. So he's one of the best ever. Um, and this is him. These are his games. Uh, let's see here. He his overall record and this is this from what I I'm pretty sure is just tournament games okay yeah it says exhibition games were actually excluded from this statistic so in tournament games he had 704 wins 159 losses and 1070 draws Okay. Now that does not even mention speed chess games or games he played not at tournaments. These are just tournament rated games, so big career. Sorry. And awesome. Here, let's go to the game. Okay, this is Korchnoi playing white against, I mean, sorry, uh, Sigrid Petrosian as white. He played against Victor Korchnoi as black. Okay, D4 opening. E6, knight to f3, f5. When the pawn is here, this is called the stone wall, and the, the black pawn comes here to uh, d5. This is called the stone wall defense. Um, you'll play against it a lot. And so let's see how Trojan plays against it. He's going to feed Fianchetto on the king side. White bishop getting in on the big diagonal. D5. And we got the stone wall coming up. Castle. And now C4. Okay. What is white thinking here? Is that a free pawn? Well, if black takes a pawn, then white can play check against the king. And however black uh, stops the check, no matter what way, with the bishop to d7, knight to c6, uh, or queen to d7, whatever way, um, white can take the pawn back. And then white will have two pawns in the center, and black will only have one. Okay, so black often, I guess, does not take this pawn. So instead, they played c6. Now white plays b3. Okay, white's plan here. And this is a plan you should you should know against playing against the stone wall is you want to trade your dark square bishop for black's dark square bishop because you have a pawn on a dark square you'd also like to put another pawn on a dark square to protect it that would make your bishop bad on the other hand black's dark square bishop is their good bishop because black's pawns are on light colored squares. Now you would like to fix black with a bad bishop. A bishop that's the light colored bishop because it's on their own light colored squares. It makes this bishop immobile, right? Can't move to many squares. So you often play bishop to a3, trading, forcing a trade or trying to trade off the dark squared bishops, giving white a better position okay let's see what happens black castles and of course white plays bishop to a3 bishop takes here notice also uh I, what moves are available uh taking i guess they're thinking is the best because it will it does kind of misplace our knight they take possibly queen goes to e8 sometimes queen goes to e7 attacking the knight right away that's unprotected in that case, uh, you play queen to c1, then you play queen to b2. I know it's a lot of moves, but that's the best moves. And you're also getting your queen on a sharp diagonal. Um, then your knight will actually head for the square e5. These arrows out of here. Once your knight goes boom to c2, e1, d3, that's a long road, but putting your knight on a very active square, e5. 
Min Black set up the Stonewall defense. There's these pawns are very strong, but they do create a weakness. That weakness is on e5 because both pawns have been pushed, and nothing can kick out a piece from e5. This is called an outpost, when no pawns can kick it out, and it's being supported by a pawn. So, knight. Knights love outposts. It's on the opponent's side of the board. The knight is very active on an outpost, attacking four big squares on the opponent's board. That's why you'd like your other knight, other knight to go there as well. This is a big strategical point in the stone wall. It's a weakness. Both knights are aiming for it. If, if you get that outpost, you're very happy. But instead, okay, queen plays e8. Nonetheless, that's still the plan. To come to e5, it's still a weakness because it cannot, cannot kick our pieces out. Okay, so that's why knight went to c2. Now, queen goes to h5. Uh, queen Maybe setting up threats. Okay, you got to be careful of this. If this was your game and you were playing white, and your opponent just went zoom. Queen to h5, you got to be careful. Queen is aiming at the pawn, the knight and the queen, and I know there's a knight here defending it now, but knight and queen are an amazing team. They are very strong tactically. Actually, queen and knight, stronger. Are more dangerous can cause more damage than a queen and bishop not as strong because they move the same way they move diagonally but a knight has many more tactical possibilities the so queen and knight is a a very dangerous weapon got to be careful when these pieces start swarming Ooh, watch out now right now the knight is here bending h2 but you know, a move like knight to g4 is now in the air, threatening a mate. So if this knight ever moves, even if it goes to a good square, then, you know, a quick move. You better be careful. Let's see what happens. Queen goes to c1. Maybe they, maybe uh, since um, black is fixed with this bad bishop, like we were saying before, maybe white would like a trade of queens, possibly, and go into a endgame with a better bishop. Let's see. Knight plays to e4. Of course, we know where this knight is going. It looks funny. It's coming back to the first rank, but it's repositioning itself. Remember, we had to capture on a3 to get Black's good bishop. But And you might have to recover from that by playing a few moves to reposition yourself. So knight to e1 is trying to get to d3. That's the fastest route. This is the route the knight took. Actually, this is the whole route in the entire game. A3, C2, E1, D3, E5. That's supposed to be E5. Get over here. Okay. So, uh, oops. So, nonetheless, um, five was played. Black's playing very aggressively, trying to storm White's kingside with the pawns. Uh, this can sometimes be done if the center is somewhat locked. Then maybe black is going to get away with starting to push pawns, open lines against this king. So white has to be careful. Knight d3, still heading for e5. Knight d7, also aiming at e5, so can trade off at least one pair of knights, possibly. King wants to move over to h8 to make way for a rook. Maybe black dreams of opening the g-file. Wouldn't that be good for black? Wow. Oops. All right. F3 here. This is not true outpost, as white proves here, because the knight can be kicked out. Whereas e5 is a true outpost. There are no pawns that can kick. So here, if you need to kick out a piece, it's very convenient. Okay, be careful here. Um, there's a twofold attack. Uh, well, it's not a twofold attack yet because there's two 
vendors right now, but be careful. Uh, you always have to be very, very weary, very careful, very cautious when the knights are swarming. Even without the queen, knights are dangerous. Okay, so they're always setting up tricks. Okay, e4. This move made possible by the friendly people at Bishop G2. The Inketo Bishop. Oops. Because, remember, it's a line controlling piece. Uh, there's two pieces attacking. There's actually uh, three pieces. There's actually one, two defending. Now, I don't know the idea here. Take. Take, take, ah, uh, check. Okay, the rook is hanging. Guys, uh, take, take. That's why. If rook takes rook, okay, so if, um, let's say black takes, I think we could just take here. Now, they don't have time to take the pawn. So it looks like a free pawn here. Don't have time because their rook is under fire. And it's, un it's well, capture, capture, take. There looks like some tactics here. Possibly capture, removing the defender of the rook. If rook takes, queen can take. And then if rook takes, queen can take, right? And if something like this, I don't know, whatever. You got checks. It's very dangerous for black. It's too dangerous. I can't get into this. And there's, uh, it's, it's way too good for white, rather. So, I think that's what's going on. That's why they didn't take. So, Knight goes to f7 instead. What's white's best move here? Notice white is very well developed. Pieces are out. Do need to get these rooks into the game, especially the one on a1. Let's see what unfolds. Capturing here. Opening lines. Now. Yeah, had to take because white is obviously threatening here, push making a uh, protected pass pawn. So black has to capture. No. Possibly capturing on d5 or f5. Guys, I'm not very good at tactics, so help me here. What's better or positionally? For some reason. I'm thinking taking on d5 because it seems to mess up the pawn structure. Either way, there will be a pawn on. Okay, so they do take on d5. Capture back. We can attack it right away. It looks like there's almost what looks like a a true double attack. Attack against d5. Okay, attack against the rook. Of course, oh, it's not true. Rook can play d8 to protect. Okay, so let's see what happens. They play f4. Now, I think it pawn takes, maybe knight takes, thinking of pushing the pawn, possibly. Now, both these pieces are protected, but it's a very active queen here. Maybe even thinking, uh, well, oops, d6 was played. In a pin. So, what the move is? Knight to f4. Now, did white give away their rook? Not really, because black doesn't have time to take it. The queen is under fire from the knight. If the queen takes the pawn, free pawn, is this a free pawn? Should they take the pawn and get out of attack from the knight? No, they shouldn't take the pawn because, uh-oh, knight to e6 is a fork. Attacking the queen, attacking the knight. Also, queen can't take pawn because knight falls. Queen cannot take the pawn here also because the knight falls. Okay, so let's see what happens. Oh, they do take the pawn. Well, I'm wondering, are they going to get forked? Are they going to lose their piece? Does... What happened? Oh, black resigns here. Black resigns. 
Okay, so there was no way to defend. Okay, so 